Hey everybody, Bo here. Welcome to a very special episode of The Dark Parade. Um, I am in the midst of getting some stuff together for the next few episodes and at the same time uh, finishing up the school year. And so this episode is going to be a little bit of a best of, uh, but not in the sense that it's a clip show. Instead, I'm going way back into the vault and I grabbed a, uh, one of the videos I did that was a Patreon exclusive show. Uh, I did a show there and I would like to do it again, maybe this summer, uh, called the Ouija experiment experiment in which we looked at movies with the word Ouija in the title. And, uh, I was joined by different guests and it was all on video and there was, uh, all kinds of silliness involved. And so here is the audio of one of those episodes. So if you haven't heard it before, I think you'll enjoy it. It's very silly. Uh, these are generally bad movies, but you know, it's fun. And so, uh, with me on this one is Scott Crawford from the Friday nightmares podcast. And we look at, uh, the Ouija experiment, uh, experiment episode on, uh, the Ouija exorcism. And this was a particularly strange movie, but I hope you'll enjoy it. I think it was a lot of fun. And I'll be back uh, next week with Kate Pollock for a new episode of Heart of Horror and then some What You Watching after that. So more new stuff is on the way. But for right now, while I'm, you know, making some tests and getting ready for uh, finals and, and so forth, uh, here is a little bit of a blast from the past. And, and as I said, I hope you enjoyed. I think you will. And uh, thanks, as always, for joining the Dark Parade. I'll see you next week with uh, brand new stuff. Welcome back, lovely patrons. Uh, it is I, your faithful host, Bo. I am joined uh, for a new episode of the Ouija Experiment Experiment by none other than Scott Crawford of uh, uh, Controllers Up, Cards Down. Uh, you got your uh, your Friday Nightmares. Who am I leaving out, Scott? Uh, it's not horror, okay? Oh, it's not horror, okay. That's right. That's, uh, that's over on Dark Discussions. Yep. So that's why I forget it because I don't see it on the regular like I do with the other stuff. Nah, nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing right, wrong exactly. with it. Right, exactly. Um. Anyway, glad you're here. Uh, here in the lab, the lab, the lab. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the reason that we we bring people into the lab is so that we can take a scientific look at movies similar to the Ouija experiment, hence the Ouija experiment experiment. You can see I have multiple pins in this pocket to <laughs> do science you're authorized. with. Rulers. I've got rulers. <laughs> and so we are here to measure and dissect and, and evaluate. Uh, the latest test subject is a film entitled The Ouija Exorcism. Let me make sure I've got the title right, and it's not just Ouija Exorcism. Yep, I think it's The Ouija the, Exorcism. It is The, the Ouija Exorcism, uh, not to be confused with the random Ouija Exorcisms that you may run into. <laughs> this is the one. This is the number one. And so uh, this is the part where I get to blame other people for this dumb idea. <laughs> so why did you decide on the, the Ouija Exorcism for the Ouija Experiment Experiment? Well, you know, it just some of these Ouija movies just you need to take a deep dive. And, you know, when I'm searching up Ouija movies, I see Ouija exorcism and it just calls out to me because, I mean, what's a what type of movie is a bigger deep dive than Ouija and exorcism? It's like the, it's the most unique title ever. So it's something that I just wanted to choose for this because it's got to be dissected and just figured out what is going on in this movie. I'll say to this movie's credit, both a Ouija board and an exorcism are in the film. So there is an actual Ouija exorcism. Yes, I was kind of shocked that they added both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I figured it was one or the other. Or, or like one or the other would be mentioned very briefly, just a real throwaway line. But both elements are actually kind of important to the story. Yeah. So before we dive in, a couple of... Uh, uh, of statistics, of uh, bits of information, evidence, if you will, 
Uh, this was written and directed by a gentleman ma- named Nick Slatkin. Uh, Nick Slatkin, uh, uh, of course, uh, known for this, has directed uh, as well a series of, uh, I assume, comedy videos called Spring Break Training. Oh, boy. Uh, directed a few episodes of Breaking Fat. <laughs> Um, and, uh, feature credits include a movie called Placebo, Sulfur, uh, and, and of course the Ouija Exorcism and an upcoming film that says it's filming called, uh, Heartland Cartel. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that, how that goes. Uh, Ouija Exorcism, the last feature, uh, of, uh, Nick Slatkin in 2015, um, stars nobody you've ever heard of. Nope. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, m- most of the of the folks in this movie uh have never shown up anywhere else. I, I I think Lynn Newton who plays the nurse and has like two lines in the movie, I think she's been in a couple of things. Um again, nothing you you would know much from, but like you know, is a working actress seems to be yeah, so they probably just takes on a lot of smaller roles and whatnot. I mean, heck, this was a like you said, very brief role for her. Yeah. So, uh, looks like the the budget for this thing was was about half a million. Oh wow. Um. Yeah. Right. Which uh, that that feels right to me because there is a little bit more of a production budget. Yeah. For this thing some movies but also it's you know this is definitely we're on the on the cheap end of the pool uh with this production not that there's anything wrong like plenty of uh cheap movies so oh absolutely uh again not not disparaging the film for its budget um so i had never seen this movie before nope neither have i uh which again unsurprising there are about 80,000 films with the word Ouija in the title. I've seen right. roughly half. Oh boy. Um <laughs> and and so the movie uh let, let's trot through the this plot uh fairly quick here. So the the movie is uh it starts with three kids. You got your Bev. Don't you know, don't be confused with it. It's not that Bev. Different no. Bev. <laughs> Uh, that Beverly, although that character is pretty much the same character from the one in it, I was like, you know, Nick Slack, and I see where your influences are, and yeah. I appreciate it. He definitely doesn't shy from wearing his influences on the sleeve. No, not for <laughs> a second. So you've got um, Joe, who is a, a Hasidic Jew, or seems to be certainly Orthodox, and has, I, I, don't, I can't remember the name of the, the curls, but has those. Yep. And um, then there's Max, who is the kid that's kind of hosting all of this. And they're, you know, young kids playing around. Uh, Joe has taken a spirit board from his father's office and is like, hey, how about we fuck with this? This will be cool. And then me and Bev will make out. And Max is like, yeah, I knew you two were into each other. <laughs> And, and, but then Bev has to go home. They're like, they, they fuck with it for a second. Then Bev has to go home. And of course, as happens in these movies, um, once you start playing around with a Ouija board, weird shit starts to happen. Uh, Joe like wakes up, um, the, and, and is looking around the house for Max, who is all ghostly looking and, and kind of, kind of spooky. And there's some whispers and stuff. Yeah. Like that. It set up a pretty good, uh, creepy atmosphere right in the beginning. I would have to give it that. Yeah. So here's the thing that we should talk about with this movie is that, like most most scenes, again for a, a fairly low budget independent film, the lighting and camera work is pretty good in this movie. Yeah, I was gonna say because you have like, like because I noticed the lighting in a lot of these, like especially these lower budget films. And yeah, the lighting in this was pretty impressive. Yeah, like would... there, it seems like there's an actual crew. Yeah, 
and that kind of knows what they're doing here. So, and surprisingly, I, well, and that makes sense because again, this is a guy who had at least done, you know, indie productions before and, you know, had worked with film crews and stuff like that. So I assume by the time he gets to the Ouija exorcism, you know, like maybe he's not much of a director, but he's, he knows how to light a scene. Yeah. You know? So anyway, it, this, but I think you're right. I think this all, like, this was the point in the movie where I was like, is this going to be okay? <laughs> right? <laughs> like this is because it ends with, um, the, the kid Joe calling his father and his father is like, wait a second. Did you say you took my Ouija board? You stupid son of a bitch. All right. You, <laughs> you hide somewhere until I get there. And so he shows up. And Max's parents are dead on the ground. Uh, the mother is like nude and eviscerated. I, yeah, I was going to say that was uh, strange. Just that there was a naked mother on the ground, topless. But then like, what was it? Her guts were like out of her stomach. Yeah, that's that's the stuff with horror movies sometimes where I'm like, are do you want me to be titillated by this? Or is <laughs> right. this? Anyway, yeah, it's a little weird. But uh, the movie also is not afraid to show boobs. In fact, enjoys no. it whenever it can. So, you know, it's that kind of movie. Like, there's there's a little boobage here and there. And uh, so, the yeah, so Max's mom is eviscerated. Max's dad's dead on the floor. Um, Dov is the name of the father. He finds this spirit board, like, puts it in a case, and then turns around, and there's Max's dad all possessed. And he tells Joe to run, his his son. He's like, get the fuck out of here. Possession's happening. And then we cut to older Joe waking up. You know, it's like, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> and older Joe is really the anchor that sinks this movie for me. <laughs> yes, I was going to say the same thing. Like, this man just had no inflection in his acting voice at all it was all oh, just the same talking like this yeah. throughout the movie like wow like i i was for him being the main character it's like I, the acting like you gotta have someone that's a stronger actor than that yeah like i don't want to dunk on any you know independent actor out there or anything but you're right it's just it's real monotone there's very little emotion there are a lot of scenes where he's like got to be kind of playful and it just doesn't happen for him. Like it just never like his words don't actually reach his emotions on his face. So yes, like that scene in particular, we'll get to it in a minute, but there's a scene where he and Bev as adults, like go on this hike and they're supposed to be sort of chatting it up and like recalling the good old days. And it's just a lot of like, Boy, it sure is good to see you now, Bev. You, it seems like things have really worked out for you. What's going on with this Jeff guy? So true. It's and you're like, oh my, and and everyone around him is really trying, uh, I think. And he just and because he's the focus of the movie, he's the main actor in the movie, and he's the worst actor in it. Yeah, it, like I was kind of shocked because even his son was a better actor, right? Or Jeff swap Jeff out yes. for this part. You know, like, he, like I know he looks more the part of the character, Jeff, but so fucking what? This, like, I, apparently the, the actor must have just been a buddy or something. Or It's kind of what I was thinking. It, I, it, it really is confounding because there are so many better actors, so many other better actors in the movie that it's like, why did you cast this guy? He could have, yeah. like. Again, I don't want to. I don't want to just dunk on the guy, but you know, you had other choices here, and you just made a mistake. You fucked up. Yeah, I was gonna say because, like, if it had a better actor, like this movie would have actually been way better. Yeah, yeah. It, it. I don't know that it ever would have been good. No, but it. Yes, it would have been made way more watchable because. He just drains the energy from every scene he's in. And yeah. this movie is not long, but it kind of feels like a slog. <laughs> yes, it does. It felt like I it almost it felt like it almost took me three hours to get through. Yeah. 
yeah and like i was doing notes and kind of take because i i the way that i watch both these is i'll do a one a pass one time just to kind of see what the movie is and then i'll go back through and make some notes and this one i was like making notes at the same time because i just had nothing better to do <laughs> right it was like this guy's talking again about you know oh Bev, I really need to get to the bottom of what's going on in my past. I don't understand why my. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about all those things that are going on. Oh, Oh, I'm getting angry. Can't you tell? (laughs) I've never been so livid, Bev. Yeah, (laughs) it's really something. So anyway, um, he gets a phone call and he's like, I'll be there as soon as I can. And it turns out, we find out in the very next scene, it's just him and his kid Noah now on the road uh to go check out uh his grandfather noah's grandfather joe's father who is now dying yes 30 i gotta put i gotta preface this right now 30 years later yes yes and apparently in in the time since last we saw them this kid joe grew was put up for adoption grew up away from his father and he says yeah there was some accident there was some accident that i don't remember <laughs> and they arrive at the grandfather's house of dov's house and this nurse that i was mentioning earlier who's actually been in some other like real television shows and stuff uh maggie she's like hey this dude's uh uh he's really circling the drain i don't think he's gonna make it much longer um anyway uh craft services for everybody right even though i'm only here for about 20 minutes i can like, still my time's up now okay yeah. good <laughs> all right i'm gonna grab club sandwich and get out of here you guys just killing it so see you later <laughs> um and our our heroes noah and joe uh go to the bedside of the dying father um who was like who the hell are you guys yeah like, this is this is Noah. This is your son <laughs> or your grandson. I'm your son. Remember me. And the funny thing is the father is supposed to be on his deathbed, but he looks the exact same that he did in the very beginning of the movie. Healthy. Yeah. They didn't even try to age him at all. It looked yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, third, it, like he, <laughs> he does not crack at all. He goes no. uh, the whole time. He looks he looks perfect. Maybe a little tired, at best. Yeah, and but yeah, and then he's just uh, anyway. Well, th- this death scene is so funny because as soon as they show up, he's like, "The fuck are you doing here? Get out of here! You got like, yeah, why right. are you in this house? You've <laughs> got to get out of this house." Um, which is actually a, a pretty good setup, but um, he's like, "It's too dangerous for you to be here," and. Then, uh, like, he kicks Noah out of the room. The father does. Joe, get out of the room. My father and I need to have an emotional conversation. And (laughs) once he leaves, uh, he's like, "Um, I need to understand why you kicked me out and gave me up for adoption. And (laughs) Dov is just like, you have to promise me, never lose your faith. Eck! (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's like just so random because he wasn't caught didn't even look like i said didn't even look sick wasn't yeah. even pretending to be sick no. just just like you would be like you'd walk into someone's bedroom that's just chilling they're watching tv in their bed that's how he looked just chilling comfy <laughs> yeah <laughs> dead um yeah it's so funny um yeah so we immediately cut to awake uh or you know i i'm not uh, of the Jewish faith. I don't know if there's a particular name for the observation of the dead. Uh, yeah, I think it's the vigil. Vigil, perhaps. But it, it anyway, it's the same shit everyone does where you get together and give each other casseroles and stuff. And uh, and, and try to make everybody feel better. and Or at the very least, fill their fridge so they don't have to cook. And then right. just cry and eat. Which, <laughs> we all been there. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the point, Scott. Oh, don't oh, quit, quit trying to distract me. So, my bad. My bad. <laughs> so here we meet adult Bev, um, and her boyfriend Jeff, who is just a, you know, he's just a, an asshole. You know, yeah. he's he's a womanizing asshole. 
Yeah, but for some reason, like a woman is an asshole that still actually just had some funny lines, especially at the vigil when he's walking around. It's yeah, like, well, this is boring as shit. <laughs> right. Jeff was the character that was like, I think I kind of get behind Jeff. And then later on, it turns out that he's he's just a jerk. But yeah. Um, and there's also Chloe, who is a daughter, uh, but not. We, we quickly learned that Jeff is a boyfriend, certainly not a husband, definitely not related to Chloe. Chloe is not having any of this. And um, then Noah meets chloe for the first time in this scene and just leers at her like a goon <laughs> yes it's stunning he's just boing like instant horny like i need to talk to her yeah. and he just goes right over to her <laughs> yeah um meanwhile jeff is pissed off because the 36 dollars worth of flowers he brought he tries to give joe and joe's like yeah, it turns out that, it, you know, in the Jewish faith, flowers are, you know what, I'll put these on water, uh, in water anyway. And Jeff's just like, you know, he's thirty five ninety nine, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm not just throwing <laughs> these away. I don't care what, I don't care what your God tells you. These are expensive flowers. And that's uh, when I was like, all right, I'm kind of digging this Jeff character a bit. And then like a couple yeah. of scenes later, no. <laughs> right. And, and so Joe and Bev get a moment alone where they just trade the most horrifying life stories where <laughs> Bev is like, yeah, a few years ago, I lost my husband to colon cancer. It's like, Oh God, that's yeah. terrible. And then Joe's like, I know how that is. My wife died of lymphoma. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, let's give you guys the most saddest backstories ever to just talk at this funeral about. That's a good idea. <laughs> my note here was, boy, what a fun conversation. <laughs> right great catch it up with you bye <laughs> right this is the first time that these characters are interacting we want them to like fall in love and rekindle this romance and the whole conversation is like yeah it really took took its time with my husband yeah i, I kind of watched it eat him uh from the inside out and uh chloe just never been the same you know just dead in the eyes <laughs> hey like, you want some cheese yeah it's good catch it up let's let's you want to get a drink <laughs> yeah <laughs> And and also, uh, Joe, not shy about being like, so tell me what, what the fuck's going on with Jeff? This does not make right. any sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, Noah finds this spirit board uh, to kick things off uh, in the, the supernatural Ouija exorcism realm. And while he's doing it, there's uh, some pounding on the wall that even Joe and Bev here are like, what is that? That sounds like somebody found a Ouija board. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Ouija board was found. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, anyway, then later on, Bev and Joe are kind of flirting on the front porch while Noah is just Googling Ouija board and uh, in his room and starts playing around with it. And he's trying to contact his dead mother, who we just learned died of lymphoma. <laughs> And when the board doesn't answer him, he just kind of leaves it, which you're not supposed to do that, Scott. You're supposed to say goodbye. They even they even <laughs> specify in this that you're supposed to say goodbye. Yeah. And so, meanwhile, Joe hears some like weird shit on his can telephone that was a thing they were listening to in the opening scene that you think ought to matter more, and it really doesn't. Right. It's one of the problems is like this comes up twice in the movie, but never really a third time. No, <laughs> it's, eh, it's close, but no cigar. Nick Slatkin. Um, <laughs> and anyway, so all this Googling has led Noah to translate the back of the board, which is all some ancient language or something. And it's the the rules of the Ouija board, which kind of cross over from movie to movie. There's uh, don't play by yourself is definitely a rule. Um, be sure you say goodbye. And then this one has a couple of new rules for my playbook, which is you don't let the board count down or go through the alphabet backwards. Yeah, I thought and I was taking notes on that, too, because I'm like, all right, let's see if these come into play later. Yeah, it happens, but it doesn't, I don't know that it really means anything. Yeah, because anyway. I, like, I don't remember seeing it counting down much. It only happens the one time. Anyway, okay. But, uh, and also don't mention God. 
Yes, which I don't think ever is mentioned again. No, no, that one never got brought back up. Right. So um, Noah paraphrasing Meatloaf is like, well, one eight of four, or one out of four ain't bad. <laughs> and I uh, fucked up the joke. And then <laughs> uh, flubbed, flubbed the punch like, God damn it. And then like that night we see some blanket blankets get yanked off of Noah and then a door slams. And it's also in this weirdly mirrored bedroom. Yeah. That is a hundred percent for fucking. Yeah. I'll say like, cause uh, the part was, this was the uh, grandfather's house, right? Yeah. Yep. So it's like some, so grandfather has got a room for getting busy in. Good for him. <laughs> right. The guest room is for immediate loading and unloading, if you know what yeah. I mean. <laughs> and, and so uh, it turns out the next day, Jeff and Bev are headed up to a cabin, so they say, with uh, a pit stop that they make to invite Joe and Noah along. And they're like, well, uh, probably not. You guys go to your cabin and have a good time. And so Chloe, Jeff, and Bev take off to this cabin. Then Noah and Joe hit the road. One presumes like they've kind of wrapped up the funeral, and I guess they're in the process of like selling the house and that kind of shit. Like all of that stuff takes some time, but they're not hanging out in town or anything. They're going back home. Right. And uh, one thing it's, uh, Noah brings up too is, did grandfather have a cat? And mm. uh, he was like, because it was like because he had cat scratches which we see later and that's one big fucking cat if there's a cat scratch <laughs> right yeah yeah it's it's like uh, did you think a cat did that yeah and you didn't get that checked out right that looks Just, very like infected <laughs> d- did grandfather have a cat the the size of a pinto did he have a wild tiger right did was he <laughs> keeping like you know one of those weird florida jerks that keeps a bunch of jungle cats around was that was that what grandfather was into is that how he could afford this place <laughs> right is that why he has the mirrored bedroom yeah i mean oh uh, the grandpa definitely had lame underwear <laughs> yes he did <laughs> you know uh and he there- probably had a mirror on the ceiling too I, I and I am willing to bet there's a camera behind at least one of those mirrors. <laughs> yes. Probably more than one for, you know, good angles. Yeah, so you, you don't want coverage. Just one shot. <laughs> you don't want one shot. You want at least a few angles, make it look like a movie. Yeah, right. Some B roll. Um yeah. <laughs> All right. So on the way, Noah is like, Hey, I really want to go fuck that girl Chloe. How about you take me to that cabin? <laughs> and uh Joe's like that sounds like I would be a cool dad if I did that. Let's go. And they head to uh, this this cabin that has been the the address was left by Bev on a a slip of paper, and there's uh, the yoga lady. They pass Jeff, uh, who is chatting up this lady. Um you know by the side of the road and and you know noah not noah uh joe and jeff really lock eyes and um so you know set up a little bit of a lover triangle kind of thing and so they pull up to this cabin which is in no way a cabin no i was gonna say this is cabin this is a freaking mansion Right. It's just a giant. In fact, they say that they're like, this doesn't look like a cabin. And it's like, right. Why would you ever call it that? Why wouldn't you just say like, you're going to stay at a fancy luxury hotel or something or right. Like anything like this is where I seen this house and I seen the inside of it and goes, you know what? This looks like a porn director's house who makes Skinamax films. Right. And he films all of them in his own house. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And uh, anyway, so the you know Bev is of course very happy to see them. Joe starts unpacking. Jeff rolls up and is like, "Hey, bro, you probably saw me with uh, that hot little number yoga instructor. Um, how about you keep your mouth shut about uh, Ronnie? Is the is the yoga oh, instructor's yeah. name? But you keep your mouth shut about that uh, to Bev, huh? 
Huh? Like instantly threatening. Right. Come on, be a guy. Be a guy. How about you just be a guy and you don't say anything? Um. <laughs> anyway, so meanwhile, though, Jeff goes inside and is like, hey, Bev, man, son of a bitch. I just got back from the store. You know what I forgot? Bread. We're going to need some bread <laughs> if we're going to make some sandwiches. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the store. She's like, we don't need bread. He's like, yeah, you got to have bread for sandwiches. Don't even sweat it. I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> and he takes off. And Bev, using her like spidey sense or something, is like, wait a second. Let's just check the dishwasher. <laughs> of all the places to check. <laughs> and opens up the dishwasher. Sure enough, big ass loaf of bread in there. Because that's where you put bread, apparently. <laughs> well, if you're hiding it, because because Jeff is going to go fuck Roddy, which is exactly what happens. Yep. And they, they don't shy away from showing it either. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, so a little bit of boobage here. Um, Noah hangs out and just kind of creepily stares at Chloe for a little bit. Then we see, uh, jo this is the scene where Joe and Bev go hiking together. Yep. And, uh, you know, kind of catch up and flirt and whatnot. And Noah, meanwhile, has found the spirit board in the back of the car, which is, and he, go ahead. I was saying, yeah, which uh, he didn't pack or anything. Right. And uh, meanwhile, back on our walk, Bev and Joe are really getting chummy to the point where Bev is like, you know, I may have fucked up with this old Jeff thing. Like, are you sticking around? Are you going to be in town for a little while? Like, she's like, ready to cut him loose. Yeah. Like, she's totally coming on to freaking Joe right off the bat. <laughs> oh, absolutely. She She's taking one look at Joe and looking at Jeff, and there is no comparison. No. <laughs> And meanwhile, Ronnie and Jeff are doing some pillow talk about how Ronnie is a shaman. And then they just fuck some more. Yeah. That's all you need to know. I thought all shamans were guys. Yeah, there's a running <laughs> gag about that. And it's <laughs> it's close to a workable joke. Yeah, I'll say it's, it's enough where I like picked up on it and kind of had a few laughs. Like, okay, they're playing on it. Right, right. Like, like I said, this movie gets right next door to being okay. And then Joe shows up on screen and just ruins everything. <laughs> He's like, hey, guys, I'm here to, here to act. Oh, everybody left. Oh, crap. <laughs> hey, Bev, things are really going good between us. I've never been so excited. Um, meanwhile. Can't you tell how excited I am? <laughs> no, Noah is using the spirit board alone in his room like you're not supposed to. Right. After he just said, don't use the spirit board alone. Right. And this is the point where uh, he checks out the scratches in this mirror where it looks like, you know, Freddy Krueger has attacked him. Right. It's like, dude, I would if I woke up and seen those, I'd be like, hey, dad, can you take me to the emergency room? I think I might need a few stitches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he does walk in on Chloe in the bathroom, which the movie shows surprising restraint and not showing her boobies. Yes. Uh, which is appreciated because I think she's supposed to be underage in the movie. So uh, yeah, job, I think she's I supposed to be like 17, something like that. Yeah. And then there's, uh, there's this whole next sequence, which is them sitting around a fire, uh, roasting marshmallows or trying to, and Jeff is lost in th just literally flashing back in the movie to fucking ronnie a few minutes ago yes. where he's just like oh those were the days when <laughs> i was having sex with that yoga instructor oh that was so much fun I remember when that happened thanks movie we 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 get it we we just seen it a few minutes ago yeah right like uh, yeah i i remember this movie is not that long and it just <laughs> happened um so joe seems to be missing no noah goes after uh him to see what's taking him so long but Joe is busy investigating Noah's room where he kept hearing a bunch of pounding. And now he's hearing whispers and stuff. And so Noah shows up and he's like, hey, did you hear all those creepy whispers, my son? <laughs> and Noah's like, yeah, I didn't hear anything. Why are you talking like that? Why, then why, is he, why are you just monotone all the time, Dad? Show me some, Show me some emotion. I don't know what you mean. This sure is a good time. <laughs> ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> oh no he's been replaced by a robot <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> 
Jobot engage. <laughs> um, and so they start. Uh, finally, the whole gang is around roasted marshmallows, uh, and Ronnie shows up out of nowhere, which is a terrible idea because immediately uh, Bev knows what's up. She, yeah, she sniffs this out in a second, and Jeff's just like ogling her the whole time. Right. Yes, it's not. She doesn't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure out what's going on here. And no. then Ronnie, uh, is, it's the first time that she's meeting Joe and she's like, Oh, nice to meet you. And extends her hand and they shake hands and she gets a whole like Christopher Walken, you know, dead zone jerk. <laughs> the ice is gonna break. Gonna break. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's not, it's just, she sees images of Joe's father drowning him. And yeah. as soon as she sees it, she's like, I got to go. <laughs> yep. Peace. Nice meeting y'all. <laughs> I got I to gotta boop. As Duncan says. <laughs> um, boop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she, like, it's hilariously fast. It is just yeah. handshake, bye, and gone. It's so funny. It's literally just a reason to get her to meet the characters and then be out of there. A hundred percent. Right. Like you had to do it some way and her showing up for two lines is how they, they manage it. Um, yeah. And everybody heads off to bed except for Jeff, who is like, well, if everybody's going to bed, maybe I can sneak down to Ronnie's. Um, but it turns out instead he just goes to uh, to bed with Bev, who is not having any of it no she is pissed yeah, right and like chloe is hearing through the wall and everything like it's a good good old-fashioned couple fight and meanwhile noah kind of sees chloe walking into this indoor swimming pool that they've got because again this is a mansion that they're in uh walks into the pool in her nightgown and he's like right so he jumps in after her and kind of creeps up behind her all sexy like like hey it's fun to be wet get it wink <laughs> and then she turns around and has like completely pale eyes and is all possessed looking and is like Rah! and then he wakes up you know but it's it's not terrible makeup or anything it looks pretty good no i was gonna say like i i do like the white contacts because mm -hmm. that does give just that like otherworldly look to it yeah and it was yeah but you know of course it was all a dream yeah, and they just kind of ruined that scene there for doing that. Yeah. And so then there's a lot of wandering around the house with Noah trying to find the spirit board. And uh, he starts trying to talk to his mother again. And the planche is like, no, 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 fuck that. It's your grandpa. <laughs> 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 I love this. I love what gr grandpa ghost is just like, no, 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 your mom's busy. I got shit to tell you. I gotta tell you about this. Right, right. Your mom, you can talk to your mom later. And he's like spelling out danger and stuff like that. And I like the fact that, uh, basically, Dove as a ghost is telling his grandson that the spirit board is actually possessed by a demon. That there's a demon trapped inside the spirit board itself. And this is the bridge too far for Noah, where he's like. <laughs> Come on, ghost grandpa. I mean, <laughs> talking to you and my mom is one thing, but to think that this spirit board I communicate with the dead with is possessed, give me a little bit of a break. It's an inanimate object. Of Why would it be possessed? It's, that right. just makes no sense. <laughs> right? Like, have you paid attention to anything that is happening around you? you <laughs> right. Know? Do you remember those Freddy Krueger marks on your back? Right. What? <laughs> Any any reasoning oxygen based creature at this point <laughs> would be like, wait a second, my dead grandfather is telling me that the spirit board is possessed. It showed up uh, in the car when I didn't pack it, and also I've got these giant scratches. Something might be fishy. I uh, don't think my mom or grandpa gave me those scratches, or did they? And <laughs> so dumb. And then. Uh, Joe wakes up because he like his spirit board sense is tingling or whatever. <laughs> right. Oh, somebody's using a spirit board. And he goes and he asks Noah about it. And he's like, yeah, I've been talking to mom and with this board. And he's like, you've got the board right here. Except it comes out 
oh my god you've got the board right here <laughs> like there was almost a little bit of inflection in that voice just yeah. it was almost there right there you know that was the best take yeah there were 37 <laughs> takes that day that was the best one um and the other 36 sounded the exact same right it was all just, <laughs> again again you know it was like uh, kurt russell making the hockey players do the sprints in miracle yeah <laughs> again so true keep trying yeah. you got this <laughs> finally joe says oh, i play for the united states of america all right everybody go home uh, bravo <laughs> that was it <laughs> so so joe takes the board outside and throws it away like that's gonna do any good we've seen enough of these movies by now um yeah well i was saying then the trash can just tips over boom there it is yeah immediately pink <laughs> Ugh. and so Joe, meanwhile, is talking to Bev about, like, I, boy, I really wish I could remember the night of Max's death when his parents ended up dead and then my father sent me away inexplicably. <laughs> and Bev's like, I didn't hear it was an accident. And he's like, oh, really? What did you hear? Go on, Bev. Don't keep secrets from me. You can see how upset that makes me. <laughs> Look how upset I am. <laughs> Why, I've never been more furious. Or aroused. <laughs> Either one. It's about the same. Right. And, and uh, she's like, are you sure you want to hear this? And he's like, I couldn't be more sure of anything. And she says, all right, well, the way I heard it was that you fucking lost your shit and killed everybody. And uh, that, like, d your father was trying to drown you because of what a fucking devil child you were. And then the cop showed up. And then the, we get a flashback where Joe's father is telling a priest, because apparently, look, exorcisms are one thing that the Jewish faith is just not going to get involved with. No, they need they need the Catholic priest to walk in and help. Yeah. So they he takes him to this Catholic priest and he's like, you got to keep this fucking kid away from the spirit board. One of these days, I'll figure out a way to destroy it. In the meantime, we can't have the two of these things together. Yeah. And also, he's like, what's wrong with his eyes? Uh, <laughs> and it because apparently he's got black eyes at the time, I think. Yeah, it was kind of hard to tell. like, But I think it was just like pure black eyes. Yeah, it's because he's possessed. Yeah, he's evil now. Yeah. <laughs> and so the next morning after Joe makes a big production about how like, we're going to leave in the morning, Bev. You won't have to worry about us anymore. Uh, that never comes up again. They just end up staying. Yep, they're, they're just, it was just like the line was brought up and then the writers are just like, eh, let's forget about that. Let's just make, let's just finish this off. Yeah, there's a real first draft quality to a lot of this. Um, yeah. And so Noah goes for a walk and the, Joe kind of chases after him and because he's found that the spirit board is now back in the house and he's like i am so angry noah why did you bring that spirit board back into the house can't you see how distraught that makes me like i'm talking a little louder can't you tell i'm mad <laughs> yeah and <laughs> noah is like hey i didn't do it asshole like i i didn't have <laughs> you threw it out and i didn't touch it that's that's the truth and so he kind of goes his own way chloe has seen all of this and goes to comfort him and chloe's like can you really talk to your mother and grandfather in that thing he's like oh totally it's awesome and, and she's like oh, the, the only price is some scratches and it's small price to pay yeah and they're just tiny scratches they weren't anything serious yeah and also my grandfather's <laughs> kind of a liar he'll tell you that the board's possessed by a demon but don't sweat that just my mom's cool yeah, um, don't, don't listen to Grandpa. I just, I just met the guy. I only talked to him for like two minutes, and then he died. I just, I, I don't know what to make of him. But yeah. <laughs> my mom's awesome. And you would really love her. Yeah, you, I'm really glad you guys are meeting. You, that really means a lot to me. <laughs> and, and so Chloe wants to use it to talk to her father after everybody's gone to bed. And we get a little more flashback where Joe uh, is being drowned. And then he wakes up and he's just at Ronnie's place where he's like, what the fuck just happened? They're like, oh, you passed out or something. 
and like Chloe Bev and Noah are all there. And it turns out that Ronnie, in, ad- in addition to being a shaman, is an EMT because we got to have Why a reason that? for them to be there. And uh, somehow or another, it comes out that they've been using a, a Ouija board. And she's like, the fuck? You guys have been using a spirit board? And you think that she's just going to take off again. Where she's like, I got to right. get out of here. <laughs> You're like, I'm not again. I'm out. <laughs> uh, but Noah is like, look, no, I'm the only person who's used it. And I know the rules. And I've said goodbye every time. And she's like, okay, yeah. well, I guess if you said goodbye every time, that should be okay. And he's like, I, he's like, I followed all the rules. And I'm like, and I wrote in my notes, no, you didn't. Right. Not a single one. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're a liar. You're as much of a liar as her grandfather is. Yeah. <laughs> So she says, uh, Ronnie says, look, I've got to unlock your memories, Joe, and we, and that'll help us figure out a way to destroy this board. And so there's a flashback to when he was a kid and, and he's possessed, and we learn that it's Belial that haunted the board. That's who's trapped there. And, uh, and Ronnie says, oh, my God, that's a, one of the princes of hell. We're going to need the spirit board, and we can destroy it now that we know this. So Jeff, meanwhile, is home alone and he starts fucking around with the spirit board and he's like, hey, are Bev and Joe doing it like me and Ronnie are? <laughs> the questions he's asking the spirit board is like, dude, what the, this isn't no magical eight ball. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's some real gossipy bullshit. It's like, <laughs> like the titular, the Ouija experiment, the Ouija board is just used to talk shit about each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Noah is like, all right, I'll go get this spirit board and rescue everybody. And Jeff goes for a beer when he does that. This is where the board starts like counting down from, from. Nine. Oh, yeah. And then when it reaches one, there's like an evil dead camera run through the house for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, wearing the influences on his sleeve. Sure. And so then we <laughs> cut back to Joe and Ronnie, and he's like, boy, Noah's been gone a while. Maybe I should go after him. And she's like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, 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 I'm, I'll be cool. And so he takes off, and Noah goes to the house, and he he actually finds the spirit board. But meanwhile, Jeff has left the place because he's been possessed and shows up at Ronnie's and attacks her and his eyes are like glowing blue and stuff like that. And then he attacks her and he's about to pos- like, I thought he had possessed her, but it turns out not. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like you see like this like black smoke going between their mouths. Like, I thought yeah. that was, like, the demon leaving him to go into her. Yeah, it's a real supernatural kind of thing. But uh, apparently, when, it, like, Bev shows up to interrupt that, maybe? Yeah, I, that's the only thing I can think of, like, how it didn't, uh, f- like, affect Brownie. But, like, as we'll see here in a second, affects Bev. Right. So, but anyway, Bev is like, oh, I can't believe you're kissing her. And then Jeff looks up and he's like, oh, Beverly, meh. I'm possessed. <laughs> I'm blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and his eyes glow, <laughs> and he runs after. Um, which doesn't make sense because there's the whole thing about like, well, the eyes are the window to the soul, and if they glow bright, that means goodness is inside them. But these glow, and they're not black. Yeah, like, but when Joe was possessed earlier, his eyes were black. Right, and that's kind of how it is later too when you see spoilers noah gets possessed and his eyes are black but yeah yeah but yeah everyone else is like whitish blue light yeah i don't understand any of this anyway that <laughs> doesn't make a bit of sense i don't think we're supposed to <laughs> right I, may, maybe it's just bad um yeah but there's a whole lot of just like running back and forth and like oh my god we got the spirit board where's ronnie oh my god let's go back to ronnie's ronnie's missing where's bev let's go find bev it, it's a lot of this for a few minutes of just running around trying to find everybody. It reminded me of the Scooby-Doo like cartoons, just the constant running back and forth trying to find each other. Yeah. And finally, Jeff finds Bev and kind of chokes her, chokeslams her and possesses her. 
but and Jeff is now unpossessed, and Bev stands up, and now she's possessed by the demon, and he's like, "Oh, Bev, come on, we're cool, right?" And she's <laughs> like, "No, I'm possessed, but I'm still pissed off at you because you had sex with my friend, or whatever." And and it's like eye for an eye. <laughs> Oh, yeah, an eye for an eye, the heart for a heart. And she grabs his heart out of his chest. Pulls a Kano from Mortal Kombat. And there's a weird cut here where it looks like she's about to eat it. Yeah. Like, but then I, they cut away. It looked, yeah, I was going to say, because it looked like she was almost lifted it up to squeeze the blood out to drink it and then take a bite. And then, yeah, it just cuts away, like, right in the middle of it. Yeah. It's a it's a really bad edit. Yeah, I I, I would have been like given props to the movie if it showed that all the way through. Right. Yeah. Go full, like, you know, bordello of blood with it. And yeah. Uh, anyway, so Ronnie makes like this salt circle thing so that, you know, the demon has to stay out. And they're like, hey, we got to get uh, the possessed Jeff because they still think Jeff's possessed. We're like, we got to get Jeff in this pool and the spirit board at the same time and we can exercise him. And uh, they're like, all right, well, I, gu I guess that makes sense. I, I, it almost like, are they trying to do a water birth? <laughs> Just get the demon out into the water? What's like going a, on here? A reverse baptism or yeah, something? Oh, yeah, maybe that's actually probably what it is. Yeah, and so anyway. It makes more sense. Noah just gets straight up yanked out of the circle that they're in. And, and uh, <laughs> breaks the circle, too, if he gets pulled, he gets pulled out. Yeah, and... Joe's like, oh my god, I gotta go after him. And uh, Ronnie's like, no, 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 you got a few minutes because this demon's really gonna want to torture him, so it's not gonna kill him right away. So you can kind of <laughs> drag your feet a little bit. <laughs> it takes some time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she's like, yeah, because he wants you, the, but the demon wants Joe to suffer before he possesses him uh, finally. And so she, Joe, you have time to go make a sandwich real quick. All right. Get a drink smoke a cigarette whatever you got to do then you can go did jeff ever come back with that bread otherwise the sandwich will be impossible i guess i'm just eating rolled up meat <laughs> uh if only i had a flour tortilla then this would be a real roll up <laughs> and, and then but she tells uh ronnie tells joe like all right you've got to read this psalm and and get, be in the pool and and that'll you know with the spear board all that stuff and then joe kind of marches out with his yarmulke and a bible and uh, presumably the old te testament and he goes back to the cabin and they're in its sweet ass in indoor pool and starts reciting the psalms in hebrew and uh ronnie and chloe meanwhile have heard bev screaming so they run out of the house and joe comes out in time <laughs> i don't this all happens kind of at once joe comes yeah. out to see bev dead like stabbed right yes because uh <sighs> Because trying Noah, to remember how she got stabbed. No, Noah stabbed her. Like she grabbed Noah, then possessed him. Noah stabbed yes. her, and now he's possessed. Yeah, that was that's yep, that's how it was. So they have to get him in the pool. Like Ronnie ends up knocking Noah out. They grab him. They pull him into the pool. Um, and they're you know reading the Psalms and stuff, and he's writhing around. And Ronnie says, oh, yeah, like in the process of exercising this demon, every time you get close to exercising him completely, he's going to shred more of your son's soul on his way out, which I'm making this sound way better than it is. Right. <laughs> um, and Joe says, oh, I have an idea. It's horrible and wonderful all at the same time. How about the demon comes into me? You know, like in that movie, The Exorcist. And <laughs> and sure enough, that's what happens. Uh they the demon goes into Joe, his eyes goes go black, and then Noah, who is just living the, the dream of every child, just stabs his father in the fucking chest. 
it right in the freaking heart it looked yeah. like too like just like it's, it was a death blow no hesitation it's not like his father was like oh please come into me so you don't hurt my son as soon as the demon was in him noah was like <laughs> what he's possessed fuck that dude stab <laughs> I think, take, take him out <laughs> it, yeah oh it's so good and <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a, like the one and only really weird underwater shot where Chloe and and Noah hug. And it's yeah. like why is this underwater? This of all the shots this doesn't need to be. And it's only one. It's like somebody dropped their iPhone and they were like, hey, right, that, like yeah, that looked great. Let's let's go for it. <laughs> I mean, you lost a phone, but we got ourselves an ending. Um, yeah, that looks amazing. <laughs> and then uh and then they leave together and we see the spear board floating in the in the pool in slow motion. Then insert the rocking guitar and soaring metal music. Oh, man, I was just I, I cranked my stereo with that head. I'm like, yes. <laughs> you know, like yes, a, a song that is fifty times more rocking than the actual movie. Um Yeah. But that's it. That's the end of the Ouija experiment. Or not the Ouija experiment. That's the end of the Ouija exorcism. And I mean, all right. So here is the thing that, that we ask every time on this show, of course, which is, was this a success as a film? Uh, man, like, I would say it was that close. Yeah. It, it was almost there. Like, this was, I think, the only things holding this back from being, like, a good film, like, or a, a film in general, mm -hmm. is a better actor out of Joe and kind of a little more of a fix the pacing issues because, like, there is just some long, dull moments. Like, it's pretty much the beginning and the end are the exciting part, and the middle is just drags on with random exposition yeah i i couldn't agree more i i think that you are a joe and a saggy middle away from a movie that's kind of watchable yeah uh, you know again it, it's still it's got a lot of problems there's a lot of logic problems and plot holes and stuff like that but uh you know all of that like if the movie is a good time you can kind of forgive all that stuff um, and I think the beginning is actually pretty good. Yeah, I thought the beginning, for what I was yeah. expecting to be an awful film, like was pretty good setup. Yeah, and and there are some moments even towards the end of the film, like you said, where you're, you're like, man, this if it weren't Joe, this would be okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, like if it if it just had a snappier pace and it was a little, a just more fun. Um, yeah, because I think um, one thing it probably could have done with, like in the middle, like in the second act for the most part, is do some of your typical haunting shit, like make doors close or like just do like what you'd see in most basic supernatural horror films. If you did that, it would at least given you something, but like. It, gives you nothing yeah j right yeah just something that you can kind of hang your hat on for that whole like let's go hiking let's investigate some noises oh my god we lost the spirit board where's the spirit board there it is let's throw it away no it's back you know all of that stuff is just tedious as all get out um yeah that that all being said and i know i've said this to you a couple of times now um it's still the best movie we've done on this show so far. I it's I, a far cry from recommending it to someone. Yeah, um, I would almost recommend Ouija Shark over this because Ouija Shark is awful, but it's it's kind of hilariously awful, and it, and it knows what it is. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's shameless in that way, but it's also. You know, it has a girl offering a joint to a ghost shark that's kind of a puppet, yes. and that's kind of fun. Uh, and it's what, like an hour and ten minutes long, so it just goes by so quick? Yeah, and it doesn't have the kind of, mm, I was going to say it doesn't have the pacing issues. There's a whole lot of running around in the woods in that thing, too, but, yeah, uh, you know, it, none of these are great, but 
I and maybe it's to the detriment. This comes closest to being a real movie, perhaps to its detriment because it's so it's so middle of the road. Yeah. But like, also has the problems of like, oh, it's got a real boring middle and Joe. <laughs> yes. And Joe, the right. biggest issue at all. Like, yeah. hell, this movie would have been passable if we just had a better actor. Like, because that middle, I could have tolerated it if, like, we had someone to just, like, kind of grab onto and, like, you know, be part of that story. But Joe was not that character. The actor that was playing Joe was not that character. Right. If yeah, Right. If you had, you know, interesting characters and chemistry between the performers and that kind of thing and it and it is not to be but but like i said closest to a movie just uh you know probably on the list of the ouija films that we've covered on this show so far i it, it's probably number two on that list you know because ouija shark is just so much more blatantly trying to entertain you and be weird yeah uh, yeah because i've i've watched all of the ones that you've done for the show so far and yep i would agree exactly it's like Ouija Shark is higher up there because it's just turn your mind off and you can just have fun with it. Yeah. Where where this, it's like you try to turn your mind off and then it's just pulling you in going, hey, wait, what? Um, How is that? It it leaves too many questions and then puts you to sleep in the middle. Yeah. It, right. Right. It's, yeah. It, 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 there are a lot of problems there and none of it adds up to uh, much fun. I didn't have a good time watching this movie, really. There no, were a few I, points that are funny, but not nearly enough. No, I was gonna say they're that like that's why I said it felt like almost three hours because it just felt boring. Yeah. Like for a long part of long period. Uh well, we're not gonna stick around and overstay our welcome like some movies I might mention. <laughs> um Scott, one more time, tell everybody where they can find you. All right. So yeah, you can find me at the Friday Nightmares Podcast, which is under the Kill the Cast banner on the Legion Podcast feed. Uh, it's me and my co-host, Heather Powell. Uh, we are a bi-weekly show. Just we pick a random theme and pick movies to go with that theme. Our latest episode was uh, The Friday Nightmares Goes to Prom. So we covered Cabin Fever 2, Hello, Mary Lou's uh, Prom Night 2, Dance of the Dead, and the amazingly uh, film of all, Killer Prom. You all need to watch this movie. It is a masterpiece. No. Oh it's bad <laughs> I, yeah i've never seen uh killer prom uh, oh oh you you put yourself through hell with these ouija films and oh uh, it would belong in this category i it gotcha is, okay oh, it is bad it's and it's made it's a lifetime movie too just to give you an example eh, okay. <laughs> and not a good not even a tolerable lifetime movie eh, yeah um, that that does not sound fun um, oh it is painful and <laughs> um but there's also the controllers up cards down the all-star gaming podcast where it's me, Heather, my, my other co-host, Tim, and we have a rotating guest that comes on. We pick someone new that, and we pretty much cover all forms of gaming, whether it's board games, card games, video games, tabletop games, or pen and paper RPGs, you name it. We're going to talk about it one way or another. And uh, we are a once a month show, and hopefully we will be doing some video content of some sort coming out on the Legion feed at who knows when, but we're going to try doing something for that fun. Excellent. Excellent, man. Um, thanks again uh, for those watching. Uh, thank you uh, for being a, a, a patron. Uh, I can't tell you how much it helps things. It makes this whole thing a bit self-perpetuating and. Uh, I could not be more excited and honored and humbled and, and proud. So uh, for all of those reasons, thanks. And I hope you're enjoying the special stuff that we're bringing to you. We will be back uh, next month with 